everyone. I'm Tom Thornton with another bi-monthly short interest review with our good friend Jeff Garbaz of Erlanger Research. Today, we're going to go over uh, the latest short interest data that was just released and take some questions uh, and requests um, for Jeff to analyze. So Jeff, um, before we do that, let's just remember, uh, this is for educational purposes only. Uh, if you um, are looking to make uh, any trades, uh, please consult with your licensed financial consultant uh, to your su suitability and risk tolerances. So Jeff, with that, let's get rolling. Yeah, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna start, Tom, with something I know that you like to talk about, which is still kind of playing itself out. Ooh, I love this one. Yeah, this, this is a good place to start for today. And finally, the video stops going crazy on me, so I will stop the video for me right now. Okay. At least I went three minutes. That was good this time. At least it's getting a little better. People got to see you. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, this chart here looks at how many type fours we have across our entire market. And the deal is, remember, type four is, let's just go look at a type four right now. ISRG is a good example of a, of a type four. We technically, no one short in a low short ratio. So what happens is as people go and sell this, uh, there's no shorts covering out. It just continues to drop. And so this is a good example of something that we're we're short right now. So that's that's what a type four is. Uh, Tom, you want to you want to throw in an additional comment on that before? Um, so there, there's so Erlanger has four different uh, types that they classify uh, a stock, and the first one is the type ones, and type ones are the opposite of type four, where there are a lot of shorts involved and the chart looks favorable on the upside and you've got a screen in there quote sheet in yeah there. so pair uh, up and it's, good so, one. it's on my box yeah, on our, okay here we go yeah yay okay so this is one um that it's a type one uh the shirt the chart is favorable uh and there's a boatload of shorts in there and let's um why don't you discuss the short ratio and then the short intensity. Yeah. So basically the short, what we do is we build a different short ratio than anyone else. It shares short as the, as the numerator, the denominator is volume over the last 12 months. Uh, Bloomberg, other people, they all use uh, average volume over the last 20 trading days. The reason we smooth it out uh, to 12 months is look at how nicely the short ratio follows the absolute number of shares short, which is this gray shaded area underneath. And so right now, the range of this historically over the last six months, one year, three years, five years, there's a weighted average to it. It's at 81%. You can see it's up near the high of, of where it's been recently. So what this means is it would take the shorts 7.71 days to cover. Now, there's a multiplier effect you can use for this because that's how long it would take shorts to cover. But think about if shorts are competing with longs, and let's say half of the trading in the day was uh, people on the short side and half of it was people on the long side. Um, you could multiply this by two and it would basically take the shorts 15 trading days to cover their positions. Um, so this is a hefty position right now and something you can see they, they've been betting basically. They started increasing their bet in September and uh, they added this kind of struggled, but now they're, they're starting to lose some money for the first time. They're, they're starting to lose money a little bit because you can see this peak at 25, but nowhere as it really rose, did it kind of occur. So okay, not, to, not to be the bearer of bad news, but if we drop below that and we look at the options rank, yep, right here. Uh, that when you see red dots, uh, that means there's been heavy call buying. So there's been a lot of call buying in here with heavy shorts. So that is a little bit of a, uh, it cancels its, each other out a little bit. Would you? Yeah, the one, oh, the one thing though on this is the, the the call buying has been going on for like a month now. Um, usually what happens is the stock gets a pop, then you get the calls, and then the stock sells off and the call buying goes away. Like here's a good example of this. At the bottom here, we had excess put activity. This is what we call a put squeeze, and it took off, and you can see how the puts came down. So the fact that the calls have been going on for a decent period of time doesn't concern me as much. Um, I, if I saw it like right here at this peak and all of a sudden we got – a couple of dots, like you can see over here, you know, that was almost perfect. We got, we got the red dots for a couple of days and then boom, the stock came down. And yeah. And, and at that point there, there, there wasn't the same amount of shorts involved. So the shorts, 
did make some money on the downside. And when you see the green dots, uh, that means there's heavy um, heavy put activity. And, and we fade the the red dots and and green dots. That's generally how we we look at things. So back, and, and that's been really to, good. Back to what Tom was saying. So. Uh, uh, Tom, the next type is a two, which is recognized strength is doing well and no one's really short. So Nike is a good example of, of that right now. And um, I know you love looking at twos that are kind of moving to fours um, as potential short ideas. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so this is a type two. And then the type, type three is where the short selling is heavy. This is a former type one and uh, MasterCard but the tech rank has kind of deteriorated. So it moved out of being a short squeeze up here. And now it's a type three where the shorts are, are making some uh, some money. Um, this is another- And there's good. a lot of call buying in there as well. So that's- Yeah, yeah. Budweiser's another good example of a type three. So going back to our chart now, now that we know what the four types are. So what, what's what been happening in the last couple of weeks is that the type fours have been rising. So th if you think about that, that means that more stocks are weak technically and no one is short. That should not be happening when the market's getting stronger. This is a chart of SPY right here. And you can see that we kind of got that happening in November, and then we had the fall apart in December. We had that happen in August as we were going up. And so it's always a bad signal. I told Tom like a week and a half ago, I was like, Tom, uh, we got a problem because we got type fours um, now over 10%. And it's when we get over that 10% number that it's a real threshold. And you can see we did it in March as well. I mean, this is this is something that I, I pay a lot of attention to. And uh, yeah, Tom, you're a little early, but now like, I think you're positioned fantastically. Um, you know, we in the last two weeks have gone from 14 out of 20 names invested in our consumer tech portfolio. God is listening, hopefully. Who is? Well, oh, no, I just did a little cross here. Yeah, there you go. But we went from names to seven names. Now we're down to only four names out of 20. We took our model finance portfolio. It's down to one name long. We had one short on. The only short we put on this year was SoFi, which Jack put on, which, is bit, which was a nice little quick one-week gainer of like almost 9%. And um, yeah, and, and we, we have no shorts yet in our model short portfolio. We haven't been short, but... We're getting ready to go. The thing that we need to see happen is one other indicator um, we look at as EBB. We'll look at that in a second. But to kind of see, you can see the average tech rank has been falling lower since the middle of January. So to Tom's point, he said this a little earlier in the call, that like things aren't as strong as people think they are. And this is validation that we're not as strong as you can see the average tech rank is dropping. And this is ETS confirmation, which is one of our, our price momentum type indicators. And you can see this, the slope of this has been coming down. We haven't turned negative yet, but it, I, I'm finding that like right now where we're at, Tom, this reminds me a lot of August. Uh, you agree? Yeah. You know, the, the, um, the interesting thing is, um, you know, um, just a anecdotal, the Morgan Stanley prime broker data had very similar, uh, exposure levels uh, currently as August. And uh, I think that that that's another one-off thing that uh, it reminds me of. But um, so let's just go back and, and say we're, what happened this last report and perhaps um, the last few reports. And then I want to look at the sector stuff that I love so much. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to market review. And I tried to go to my video, but my video now is it's crazy. I did a couple of Zoom calls yesterday. Two worked great, and then one didn't. Um, so we're looking here at our market review. We put this out every two weeks when short interest comes out. And I want to go down in here and um, kind of show people. So first of all, here's here's a long-term chart of the New York Stock Exchange short interest. And you can see that we kind of hit up a low in 21, and we've been kind of hit the peak here and been kind of coming down a little bit. So I had a talk a couple of weeks ago with a client who was saying that UBS was saying that like, the squeeze was over after the second week in uh, in January, and I was like, oh, not really. So I, I kind of went and did a calculation that I'd never done before. One thing I do do is I track um, how many absolute shares are short, and you can see this blue highlight is the is the peak in short interest last October on New York, and Nasdaq peaked in in June. You know, we're down roughly a billion two shares in Nasdaq now from its absolute peak, and then here's how much it rose. So from below, it rose 26% on New York, and it rose 42 on NASDAQ. 
So what I did was I said, okay, here's the peak, here's the low, here's where are currently the range. And what I created were uh, two kind of new things to track, capture rate and cover rate. Well, so what's interesting is the cover rate on New York now is up to 38% of stocks that, that were shorted from the absolute low that we got on uh, 1215 and uh, NASDAQ has gone up to 30%. So um, we've lost, you know, some of the firepower and, uh, and we're obviously seeing more type fours that are, uh, that are being created in the work. And we go here, this, this number is not a final number. The New York stock exchange loves to revise the numbers two weeks later, but all these other numbers are final set numbers. You can see the last two periods we dropped, we rose in December. That makes sense because December was a tough month and people were shorting stuff. But um, NASDAQ has really come off. I mean, you can see 2.54% and 2.29%. Uh, so um, it's very it's very consistent with other um, prime broker books and things like that. Actually, go back to that real quick, uh, Jeff. And I just want to go, and you had the the green and red bars, I think a little above that. So yeah. that right there, that's, that's what I, I want to see. So we're starting to see um, those red, red bars so people have covered there and to the right. Okay. Yep, yep. And where's the NYSE on that? Do you have the same? Oh, there's been, the, so we're, we're seeing covering. Okay. Yep. And and I don't see it as we were, the, the overall market was set up that short. I think exposures are still very. Weird. Yeah, let's go, let's go to that. Um, let's just do the most up to date. That was from last Friday. If we go to sector data, Erlanger, we click here. And we look at look at this. <laughs> look how much yellow we have, Tom. Now we have no we have no blue. We have nothing above fifty uh, percent right now. And look how much stuff is below forty. Twenty one of our uh, twenty four sectors are uh, forty percent or below. So in I'll I'll, I'll translate uh, kindergarten stuff. Uh, when you see the yellows like this, uh, that means that uh, there's there's not a lot of shorts involved in the market right now that the, the the chances for a significant squeeze higher really does not exist um when you see and there are times when it's above 50 percent, and those are periods that can show that we, we have the potential for a short squeeze yeah let's go back to uh september and just pull this up let's see where's yeah that's that's actually a good idea so here's see you know what where was like a really deep move down in the market um, cause that's probably going to show you. Here we go. This is, this is in the fall and October when things were bad. You can see that, um, autos were at 53 insurance. Was it, um, 53, 50, and then we had a lot that were above 45, so 45 and above. So that, as things were struggling into the October low, uh, we definitely had, had shorts there and you can see the, the monthly change. Um, you know, there were only three sectors back then on the month over month basis. That it had a decrease in their in their short position. Well, let's go back to current. Let me go back to here. We go. Here's current. Okay. Yep. So look at that. It's just yeah, amazing. And um, this is so what semiconductors I'm, are short. That that's the most shorted um, back place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then the sector type one percentage that looks pretty high. In other words, well, auto is seventeen and a half. This is the only sector that's really being squeezed right now. And you could say that these are also above 10%, so they're kind of okay, squeeze. But then look at the type fours. Look at that. I mean, 34% of uh, diversified financials are long squeezes right now. And two, four, six, eight, 10 names are above 15%, whereas- there's so bet, Wait, just go back to that. So these are at risk of going lower. Uh, diversified financials, utilities, food, uh, beverage, tobacco, banks, food, staples, retailing, energy. That's interesting. Materials. There's media in there, telecom, household, uh, personal products. What's, what's um, interesting is so many of these are defensive, Tom. And yeah. uh, I know value guys this year have had a tough year. And you can look at our sector rank and see that like, okay, so utilities are our worst sector. Food, beverage, tobacco, 23. Food staples retailing, 22. Uh, telecom, which is also defensive, 19. A lot of the uh, the value guys have had a tough start to the year because the growth names and the momentum names and the crappy names that have come back um, are driving it and there's no performance uh, coming on the value side of things right now. Yeah, I look, I, I'm short a couple staples. I'm short uh, Pepsi and, and Kellogg's and those are just sort of, I mean, Pepsi's kind of against me a little bit. Uh, Kellogg's, I'm flat. 
but I think those just sort of show up as a bit concerning um, that those could just drop off. Yeah, Kellogg's um, General Mills looks very similar to this too. Um, same same chart. Um, look at General Mills ten. General Mills is a four because the short ratio is under four, whereas Kellogg's it's just a little bit higher. Um, but yeah, they're they're all kind of struggling right now. They're not doing. They're not. You doing know that. what? One thing about the short ratio that I would say, with it being almost five days to cover, uh, there's not a lot of volume in this. So yeah. you have a lower short ratio when there's you know boatloads of volume and and things as well. So that's another issue well this might be a good trade for you switch into uh general mills it's the same chart and it's got less shorts in it and uh anyway well, they all look the same all these staples yeah. look the same where they're just sort of they've gone down they're holding support barely and um waiting for the here's here's what well, here's one like it's just been it's, it's a little bit outside of a four now it's church and dwight because the tech rank came up a little bit but like a break of eighty dollars that would be like see you later if that thing could really fall apart so um, yeah I'm in agreement. So that's kind of a good summary of, of where we are right now. That's very good. Um, so you want to look at some names? Yeah, let's um, let's just. I'm gonna give. You, I'm gonna start and say let's start with some of the big ones. Uh, let's look at our favorite car company, Tesla. It's got the calls. No one's really short it. Yeah. Tech yeah, rank well, Tech rank hasn't made it higher though, which is kind of interesting of this move that it hasn't got above sixty, and. Mm -hmm. uh, the call put is high, so this you've got a you've got a combo a combo sell countdown thirteen today, and sequential is on day twelve of thirteen, and it doesn't necessarily have to be at a new high, so this could have top hood. Next one, uh, let's look at uh, Apple. There I go crazy again. Apple is uh, definitely shorted. There's some people short it, and uh, the thing is, remember our short intensity is relative. It's not about just the absolute number. So this stock never has a really high short ratio. So it does show that people are betting against it, which is interesting. And it's got excess calls right here. God, I, I love this as a uh, as a potential short, Tom. Yeah, I'm not involved right now, and I'm, yeah. I'm waiting for um, the, the mark indicators to give me the go-ahead uh, on that. So let me just... Uh... Somebody in the DeMarc chat room just posted the combo on Tesla. Uh, let's go to, okay, so we, actually, I'll just, let me look at where Apple is. I mean, they do have the buyback guy, you know, with his elbow on the buy button all day, so it's, it yeah. makes it a bit challenging. Yeah, it's only on day eight of 13. I think it could go sideways here to get the 13, uh, so it's it just doesn't appeal to me right now. Uh, let's look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA and Tesla are the same chart. Although, although Nvidia has a stronger technical um, in our work, it's a it's a hundred over sixty for Tesla. But you're right; otherwise, it's the same chart. Yeah, that that we're close to exhaustion on that as well. Um, let's look at uh, Alphabet, Google. It is a Type Four. Yeah, this one. Cost can, yeah, I, I, I'll tell you this: um, we talked about this one recently, and uh, before they reported their earnings and before it moved up, I was long this. I got out of it with a small gain and you were like no nope, nobody's nope this is not a good idea this is this this could fall apart and it did after and uh certainly the um the call buyers um that bought at the highs uh, are now seeing what what it's like to get the, to be in a uh, squeeze on the downside yeah let's look at um uh, amazon please it's a type four as well and the wow. call and the call yeah 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 okay uh let's look at meta this one I was I I shorted it at the highs and I thought it it worked and it worked out it, okay. It's a chip because of technically it's it's doing really well. Uh, yeah, it's that that might be a buy the dip type of idea if you can get some shorts involved here. Yeah, uh, it can also fill the gap and come down and test one hundred and fifty probably too at some point. It's gonna that, yeah, that's kind of how I, I see it. But nothing goes down anymore and it's, it feels that way again, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, so let me uh let's so keep your. Microsoft. Microsoft. This one has really moved. It's been strong. Yeah. Been, but it does have the call. I mean, what's what's interesting, um, Jack pointed this out the other day. We still have some work to do on this. Um, he was like, I've never seen more shorts in our work, you know, set up shorts than yeah. than thing right now. And, and you know, it's just one wall. one one thing, uh, Jack is sort of the behind the scenes guru who has actually been very helpful for um for working on some side projects for hedge fund telemetry as well um but yeah they're not uh erlanger researches you are not a bull or bear uh perennial 
anything. You are just, you discuss the, the work and that's what happens. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, Adobe, please. I'm short this one, Jeff. Is it type two? It's come up a little bit more type two, but actually I'm okay with shorting. See, like the thing that's interesting about a type two is like Tom, we have several technical indicators. I like our trend direction, which just turned back to red here, which means a pullback phase. So that's to me kind of interesting. And it's like the lower band of its daily DMA channel too. So I actually think this is a good point to short it. Okay. Uh, let's look at, what have we got? What do we got? I know I, everybody's like, oh, I could do blind. Um, me do. Oh, dude, uh, would you do Disney, please? I cut my, oh man, Coinbase is running in my face here. Hello. Disney kind of, you know, peaked on the earnings. It's been moving lower and the tech rank mm -hmm. is coming back down again. So it's it's working its way back to being a, a type four. Yeah, I, I'm I'm long it. I, I have a 1% position in it. I cut my, my, I took profits on half. Can we look at Coinbase? I think the last time I was on and we did this, it was ripping. Yeah, it's it's definitely like right. It's it's moderate short interest at fifty percent, and the short ratio is two point nine one days. And you know it's it's going back above and below the blue line up here, which is our two hundred day moving average. And uh, you know, so it's well. The one thing I would will say is I like seeing stocks go up ahead of earnings next week. Well, yeah, it's that one that. That pulls that gets rid of all the uh, the weak shorts, and then we have a rip. Uh, we can have a, a a problem on the downside. Silver Gate's up a lot too, and I saw that Soros took a position yesterday. Mm -hmm. And Silver Gate, this thing's up double coin right now. It's up eighteen percent. And okay. company, so having a good day today too. Yeah, that's that's probably it. Um, so a couple of things. Um, it, it's important to sometimes avoid the obvious, and let's look at. Upstart, UPST. They reported horrendous earnings and voila, it's ripping. Yeah. I mean, there's so many charts that look like this, like things that are in uh, what, uh, what one of the technicians Jack and I work with, he calls it the Richard Pryor formation. It's facing, facing is about to catch on fire. And there's, I mean, this, you just got to stay away from this type of stuff on the short side. Yeah. And we can look at a firm. That's another one, the buy now, pay they, never. They, well, heavily shorted. Yeah. It's just, and, and these are down so substantially from their highs that it's just people overstay their, their, uh, welcome on these short ideas. And, uh, can we look at Carvana? I mean, we've got the best of the worst or the going up today. Carvana's up 13%. No, heavily. I mean, yeah, the short position has gone up, but to your point, Tom, the reason the short ratio is down is because there's so much volume that's out of the stock. That's, I mean, absolute number of shares short. This, this shows you. Even though we use a 12 month average, it's enough that like it, it's the, the short ratio is not rising. Yeah. It well, it trades just like crazy every day. Yeah. Uh, can we look at Alibaba, please? Kind of looking like the, uh, the large cap tech names we looked at at the beginning. Struggle. A lot of call buying. I, I always would be looking at the calls on this where the short term positioning. I covered this one a little early. This one, Made money. this one, and for the China stuff to me is like the strongest of a. Wall. Yeah, but look at that short ratio is down. I I actually looked at that one today because it has um it has a it actually on my screen up here it has a uh, sequential uh, sell count down thirteen today. So Baidu, uh, I think that one could could slip. Uh, Netflix, please. Sure. And JD just real quickly looks pretty bad too. So a lot of the China stuff is kind of runs course. The most crowded trade on the uh, the the uh, Bank of America uh, fund manager survey. Surprise, surprise. This one has no shorts involved. None. No. And there's calls. The call buying is run up here at the highs. I, I This one doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I like, so what we have these tabs up top. So let's just click on this real quick and see. It's kind of flat. Well, it's positive, but it's flatlining. This is our, our, our volume indicator. And notice that the uh, EMF, when the red cross is above, it's, it's coming in. So it's like, and then here's odd balance volume and equi volume. The volume's kind of, the point is, the reason I want to look at this, the volume's flat. We basically have flat volume. So it's not like, and you can see the charts going sideways too. So Tom, this might be a, a good point as a uh, as a short. Yeah, yeah. It's um, a little higher. Um, so let's take uh, some questions. Um, oh, actually, um, just a, a bank for me. Uh, can you do JP Morgan? Sure. I'm short XLF and I... I 
You know, it's interesting. We we do a morning note, and we noted yesterday that bank deposits were dropping in J.P. Morgan, and uh, never a good thing to have your bank deposits go down because when that happens, you can't lend as much. Um, and someone who's a financial guy that we work with as a client made the point yesterday that with um, – money markets going so much higher at other places, um, you have a bit of disintermediation happening with the major banks in terms of their deposit size. So, you know, 5% at another place, at a Merrill or something, or a Morgan Stanley, and not as high as JP Morgan, they're, uh, they're seeing their deposits struggle a little bit. Can we look, okay, here's another garbagey type company, uh, Roblox, RBLX. This thing is up only 25% today. And not really a squeeze. Yeah. I mean, only 1.21 days to cover, 33%. So it's it's really not it's people buying the stock. Oh, God. this I'm just watching the taker, and it's just, it's like you get the little spikes, and all of a sudden everybody freaks out. All the zero data expiration call buyers are going nuts, and the put buyers are, are covering, and it's just a mess. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about that on my later note today, um, a, a little about that of what's been going on, because I think it's, I think in the last like 10 days, there's been like 14, 1% swings up and down in the market. I'm sorry. That's a very difficult market to try and find any sort of trend. So that being said, let's go to some of the questions here. Uh, let's look at, uh, IDXX. Good chart. We've added in our screen, our weekly screen, long ideas versus short ideas. So shorts are coming down and then there's, there's so much call buying everywhere, that option rink everywhere. Yeah, we're kind of done with it now because, to your point, the short interest has dropped under 50%. We look at Spotify. Ooh, this one's sent to Heavy calls. Yeah. Not being not really, really squeezed. Yeah. The two. Okay. Uh, can we look at ITB, which is an uh, ETF for home builders? And it's up today. I bought puts on it yesterday. Yeah, we don't do as much work on because so many of the ETFs are tied to the S and P. Um, but a great a great way to see this, and this is a good thing to, to show Tom, is we come down here and we go to members and we go to I know you're gonna show me a lot of shorts in this group. I know there are shorts in this. Yeah, and consumer durable. And we go look at home builders. Wham, there they are. Three short squeezes. D uh, DR Orton Legacy Toll Brothers, those are short squeezes. Not quite as strong NVR, but it's decent shorts. Mm -hmm. And you can see, like, we got shorts in, you know, some of these names in Skyline as well. I mean, KB and KB. Can you look at DHI? Yeah, Off sure. that guy. I mean, it's up. These are up 40% from October. And if rates go higher, which I believe that will happen, I can't imagine these staying at these levels, but I'm, I'm fighting it right now. I will fight this. I'm sorry. Uh, but I have puts out going out to March and we're also going to get Home Depot earnings. Can you look at Home Depot? Yeah. Not as good a chart. Yeah. So type three shorts, shorts. Can you pop it? I'm, I'm, I'm assuming there's lots of call buying. Is there so? No, no, they're not that much. No. See, about, low. see about Lowe's. Lowe's has a call buying though. And, the, and it's not a, it's not heavily shorted. Okay. Um, cause those are components on your, in ITV. On your DHI, just real quickly. Um, this is, this is a key thing about our work. Just because shorts are high or low, doesn't necessarily mean they're buy or sell. One thing we look at is what we call the intensity grade. And a grade of five means the short sellers make money more than 50% of the time. And when they're shorted, they make money on average, they make 23.9%. And so far they've only made. 3.92%. So I always like to be short something where there's a good um, batting average by the shorts. It lets me play something that is shorted, which normally we wouldn't do. Understood. Okay, so let's keep moving. Uh, Auto Nation. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Ernest. Uh, Jeff, you're still. I know. Short squeeze on Auto Nation. Yep. Wow. Let's sing okay. another one too. GPI, Group One Automotive, same, same chart. Same. Can you same. can you look at uh, and on top of that, uh, True Car, T R U E, True Car for Blake. No one's short. Nobody's short. Okay. Um, let's keep moving. So here's a question: uh, In 2021, Type Four was consistently above 10. percent Does that differ in bull or bear markets, and how does this play out at inflection points? Good question. Yeah. So let's go back to that chart. So what we're looking for are, uh, so here's here's kind of like the start of 2020, 21. We're looking for when it spikes up and gets above 10%, 
when the market's running. That's that's the only way to use this as an indicator when you're trying to use it for like a topping formation. So we kind of got that. If you look at it, it, it actually did just as good a job. We take a crosshair and look like when we crossed above. So this is 10% level. So we ran into here and then we ran into trouble and we got a nice drop. It doesn't look like it, much of a drop, but it was a good drop in July of 2021. And then we had the, the same thing. We crossed about 10% in March. And then that one just kept going until the peak. And then we kind of got like some sideways. We got some some action in there as well. So that did okay. And then the last time where it kind of spiked above in 2021 was in here. Um, we got above it. And then, we ultimately... you know, the thing is also, Jeff, that the technical rank was, was declining in some of those periods too. So it was really, I, and I... And it was really more or less uh, not everything in the, I mean, that type fours are, <clears throat> there are a lot of the mega caps that did that. I would, I would argue that the, the move in 2021 was a mega cap induced squeeze. As opposed to, as, as opposed to a Russell induced. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which didn't do too much. Okay. So let's keep moving. Uh, let's look at McDonald's. McDonald's. Shorts were there. They're gone now. And the calls are high. Okay. So this is a four actually in our work now. <laughs> So looks, yeah, I'm, I'm short Yum, Yum Brands. Can you look at that one? I like that. I love that. because As a short? Yeah, because it's like, it's right at a level where if it breaks 130, you know, you're, you got an air pocket down to 110 or even 120. At least you get. You know, that's That's been my thesis, which hasn't quite played out. The calls are on you. Yeah. Let's look, at, let's look at Yum C. Look at Yum, Yum China looks identical too, which is kind of interesting. I can't tell you the last time I ate at a Taco Bell or... Kentucky Fried Chicken. I just, I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. Um, it actually sounds... I, I, okay. I, I, I'm in agreement on that. Okay, Airbnb. I'm not going to get into my food choices. I'll have people unsubscribe and say, I love Taco Bell. Okay. Okay, so Airbnb. I mean, maybe Taco Bell's good late night. You're you're out drinking and you go through the drive through or... You got a squeeze today. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, we were along this in our consumer tech portfolio and I took a gain yesterday, um, which... You know, it was a, a day early, but this thing, we've been long it for a pretty good period of time. And it was just on every earnings quarter was a struggle. And I was just yeah. like, I'm not, I got a profit in it now. You know, it was like a 5% profit. I'm like, I'm gone from it. And now, the, it's the implied move was 9%. It's up 13%. So when you, when you see something trading above the implied move, that's when you get squeezed. Um, so if it was trading below the implied move, you could see a pullback. That's generally... The implied move is the nearest straddle. If you uh, buy the straddle, uh, the percentage that you would need either on the upside or downside uh, for it to become profitable. So it was rich. It was rich. And I just, for me, I just, I, I wasn't involved. Um, I, again, these, some of these are such a hit or miss. The other one that we've had in the work, which is very similar is VAC. And you can see the shorts are in that one. Um, pretty good. They just came piling in in the last two months to this thing yeah. and they've got so it's their incredible there there's there's shorts involved there, there's lots of call buying with the red dots kind of crazy so i uh we did nvidia for leah okay let's see helen of troy do we uh h-e-l-e -E. richard Pryor. oh <laughs> facing <laughs> uh, and uh a lot of shorts yeah and the and there's lots of put activity yeah lots okay and yes i see coin it is moving. Uh, I'm in this for earnings next week. And I'm not necessarily happy that it's up 11%, but uh, it's possible. But let's look at Chewy, C-H-W-Y. Okay. Kind of shorts are moderate, decent chart, no type classification to it. It's Work kind of a tomorrow. boring boring stock that's just moving higher bit by bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's look at uh, Children's Place, P-L-C-E. Someone's asking what DeMarc chat room, am I, and that's, there's a DeMarc chat room on Bloomberg. It's not that great, by the way. It used to be good, but not a lot of info, to be honest. So there's shorts involved here. Yeah. This could squeeze. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just got above the 200 day. And it's got puts, too, so it doesn't have the calls. Okay, I'm skipping on a couple of those. Um, RH, Restoration Hardware. Decent chart, but not a lot of shorts. And the calls are high. Yeah, this, uh, they just... I can't believe this stock is not lower after revising their earnings. Okay, can we look at a gold miner like G O L D? Step four. So this is I, I, I I'm short G L D. I think, you know, this has been, you know, the gold stocks are are the miners, 
it's feast or famine. And when they do break, um, someone says gold miners are sucking wind as usual uh, in my chat room. Um, so yes, it looks dangerous. Um, this could slip slip lower. Okay, sorry if you're alone. There's um, another. There's another one too. AEM. Yeah, and Newmont. They all look the same. Yeah, I know they all. So sometimes when we don't get to everybody's, uh, they all look the same. Uh, okay, a couple more. MU Micron. Kind of just neutral in the work, but the excess calls. And there's, I mean, that seeing that heavy call buying, like the, those red dots right there on the option ring. Do you remember back in March of 2020, um, start of the lockdown, and all we saw that was just massive, straight across the board put buying, and we were like, this could squeeze, this could squeeze. Okay, let's keep moving. LBS and win, please. It pretty much are about the same, I bet. LBS looks pretty decent, all the tech coming in a tad but it's it's good squeezing and win doesn't have the shorts but it looks strong technically that's actually a little better chart technically than lbs is yeah i tried shorting it covered it you know it wasn't a you know a substantial loss or anything but uh it is what it is can we look at um gld we'll look at etf it doesn't have the Short intensity and tech rank, but uh, we can see yeah. hey, there's shorts involved. Yeah, they're on a relative basis. People have shorted it. Yeah, so interesting. We get kind of our, our core stuff. You see, spread is negative. Um, oversold ETS confirmation negative. I'm sure a lot of your stuff too. Cumulative alpha, which is the change on alpha in our work, is negative. So this this and volume swing is negative. I mean, this thing just it fell apart at 180. You know, like it stalled, it stalled out at 180 and. Um, I like how the hike in Ashies. Oh, Tom, I got to show you this. I'm, I'm going to digress for a second because I really want your opinion on this. And I, and I talked about this in the video that I did yesterday. I've never seen this type of pattern ever. And I want your thought on it. So I was look. I was doing a comparison of August to like now where we are in the market. And I was looking at like some of our core indicators. And I'm a big fan of uh, parabolic SAR. And I'm sure you know that. Look what the heck is happening right now. Usually you trend, you drop. I mean, but I, 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 this is, I this is exactly there. what, um, I, on my note today, you'll see that I'm, I'm going to grab some charts from Charlie at Nomura, uh, because it's absolute, I mean, everybody's like, well, you know, you got any idea? I'm like, I, I, I've got to see a bit of a trend here. It's just, there's nothing. And this is just back back and forth. I think it's the short-term option players uh, with dealers uh, adjusting their deltas one way or the other and probably suppressing uh, the VIX index as well. So, But look at this. I see it also on, uh, let's see, the, here's the Qs on parabolic. As, not quite as much. Okay. I thought it was one other one now. It's really spy. I mean, just look at that. That is just great. Mm -hmm. So it's, let's uh, do, uh, let's look at uh, Palantir, PLTR. So this is one I I mentioned the other day. There was shorts involved. There's call buying, but there's been a lot of call buying um, yeah. calls, and and you know maybe this can squeeze higher. I think this is one like sort of a memeish type. Um, oh, wait. Uh, yeah. It's so I, I Richard Pryor. You know, I it had a it had a very high uh it had a very high implied move, and I don't like to necessarily play very you know. The, the, you know, 13% implied moves just because uh, I don't want to, you know, blow up anybody. I'd rather that's not my, my thing. Um, so, Tom, I want to show you something real quick related to, to this whole thing. So this is this is something that we do institutionally. I love to show, like, how all the types are doing every single day and track stuff. But if I come down here and look at this, we have, this is really interesting. So the, the reason this is highlighted because the difference between the threes over here and the ones, so you can see the ones are up 3.55, but this second week, uh, the threes are up 11.55. So effectively, if you were a hedge fund and your long short squeezes and your short heavily shorted stop, you lost 7.97%. We've had five weeks in a row of what I call tsunamis. And if you go back to the very top, this ties the record that we had, which is back in 2016. This, 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 let's go back down to this chart. This, this has made a very difficult year for some hedge funds that have been short, like the tight rate fees, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, this is very tough. Okay. Let's get, let's keep moving here. Uh, Datadog, DDOG. 
Shorts have been adding, and they're like they're moderate now. And yeah, there's call buying. Uh, so so Lisa has, has has a statement. This price action leads me to believe the market cares about the dovish Fed over em- anything else. Even not even a hotter than expected CPI can bring it down. We are in a pre-election year, which is a seasonal bullish year. The tide seems to be against the bears. At what point do you adjust your posi- position into long? Uh, I I uh, honestly um, I will probably not chase this 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 move. Um, because there's not enough breath that that shows um, that many stocks participating, and without the the potential for short squeezes, um, I think that we're going to be in a range. Uh, I think 4,200 is going to be a, a, a level to watch. Um, it can get through that, but I, I just I feel like uh, I'm seeing more short ideas than than longs, and uh, that especially with the internals as well. So I I just need, can't uh, get too crazy. Um, chasing Tom, can I, can, I, can I add on to that real quickly? Please add on. Um, so, like, this has only been a one month move. And the year that I thought potentially this could have been like was 2019. Um, we finished 2018 straight down, basically, uh, mm-hmm. horrible fourth quarter. And then look what happened in, in January. We started taking off like we did now, but it continued all the way into. Um, into May. so we look at this low all the way to there. The S and P rose twenty two point two percent from uh, the seventeenth of December until the very beginning of May, and where we're at right now is we're at let's call it right here. The move was sixteen percent, and right now our move on this is not even close to sixteen percent. We're at seven point six three. So I don't feel that this is anything comparable to what we got in two thousand nineteen. And uh, I was I was getting pretty excited after the first four or five weeks, and then last week just sucked, you know, in the work. I mean, things just fell apart um, across a lot of things we look at on a, a report that you get. But uh, so I, I don't I don't necessarily buy that it, that I have to participate now. I I'd, I'd, I'd rather watch, you know. Yeah. Again, I don't see. I mean, I have I have internals that are not necessarily confirming further upside, and that's. That's one. A um, few other things, but um, so somebody walking out through my office. Uh, TSN. Even then, we'll uh, we'll finish up. Okay. I'm okay. I've got a I got a bunch of people on here that want to look at more stuff, but unfortunately, um, that's probably going to be it. Yeah, just do a couple more, and then they can always they can always get a hold of me. I can do a Zoom call with them. So tell them to do that. So uh, someone says, when you say Richard Pryor, what does that mean? Well, Richard Pryor is a comedian from way back, and uh, he lit himself on fire um, smoking crack, um, crack pipe. So that's sort of the connotation there. Uh, curious if there's any way to get this type of data system if you're not on Bloomberg and are a private investor. Yes, uh, Mike, please reach out to me, and I'll send you, um, I'll forward that to Jeff. Uh, can we look at, uh, let's look at Uber, please. It's, a, it's just a classic type two. It's doing well technically. And okay. our technical uh, indicator, like you can see how it started to improve. We're a void until January. Then we kind of moved up to neutral and we've recently moved up to being strong. It's kind of a unique idea. It's it basically Phil looked at hundreds of, of uh, tech ranks and threw stocks into one of 10 categories from 10% to 100%. And uh, if we look at Lyft, which, which is the complete opposite of this thing, it'd be great pair trade. Um, you can see how Lyft had kind of, and it just, it just fell apart here. And then again, no one was really short it. So, um, that, that to me is kind of an interesting pair right now. Gotcha. Okay. So, uh, can you just do a quick, and we're, let's finish it up. And I, I, I'm missing a bunch of people, but we've got to run. Um, and if you absolutely need to have something, you can reach out to me and I'll do my best to get back to you. Uh, can you do a snapshot of the type ones and type four lists that you have? And we can just go, we can just finish it up there. Oh, uh, sure. And actually we're, we're kind of doing, we're doing pretty well this week. It's been, a, it's been a pretty good week so far. Uh, these are up like 40 and the, the, the shorts are down like 90. So here's, here's what we're long. SIVB. It's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a vanilla type list. Pentair. Capital One, Academy of Sports. I love this one, mid-cap type name. Have you ever been in one, Todd? No. Oh, my God, it's incredible. Like, when we go down south for a, a swim meet, um, there's one on the way in Georgia. It's it's amazing. My kid would be in there for, like, two hours. UBS. We have all girls, so, you know, yeah. it's... Las Vegas Sands, which we looked at. 
I put this one in as a, as a total spec idea. Um, kind of flat for the week so far, far, but but Lee Otto. Um, I like chart patterns like this right now. This is this is kind of like a quasi Richard Pryor, but um, it just got through the 200 day. People are short it. It's down from 600 a year ago. Para is in my list this week, and I went I went with a non. Every once in a while, I'll do this. I'll do a non-type one. CVS is trying to get above ninety dollars, and people are shorted. And uh, it's it's a great company fundamentally, but we'll see. If I, this is this is one that's been kind of in and out of my on my radar as far as a long idea. And they're buying another company, so that puts it a little bit at risk for upside. Uh, now let's look at the fours. I have more short. So uh, Intuitive Surgical Skechers. For solar, I've tried to find a lot of like quasi type twos that have just moved to fours. Uh, KLAC is a good example of that. Um, this one's this is the only one that's really kind of going against me a little bit. It's up over a dollar and change. Exelon, mm -hmm. Performance Food Group, Estee Lauder, and that uh, that value consumer type stuff. Yep. The, these have just been pharmaceuticals. What do you what do you make of like why they've been so bad? But they have just been sold since the beginning of the year. I know. I know. I, I like I had a lot of people ask me about Pfizer. Um and it's just like I don't have a signal to be a buyer yeah, around it's been Here's ripping lower. I mean li uh, li Lily's on the lows right now. I'm just looking at that right now as we speak. Yeah. Well the the wor worst one the worst one of all is this. Look at Baxter. It's been hideous for like a long time. I mean it's been dropping and at some point this company becomes takeover bait for people. Um Marsh McLennan. Goldman, huh? I love Goldman as a potential short idea. Yeah, I've been short um, here and there on Goldman. Uh, covered it recently, uh, made made a little money on it, but uh, it, it didn't break that three forty level, which I was hoping. Um, yeah. Well, that'd be the take out the take out the two hundred day as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Phillips, which has been kind of toppy. Energy uh, energy has been really really weak, and this one, that's that's this one, one of the places I've had exhaustion on the upside. On energy, this one finally kicked today. I'm like, yay! <laughs> I got shorted around 85, and it was just like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And today, it's off like four percent. And then last one is uh, Mosaic. This is this is starting to break a little bit too. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, catch up. Let's. So I think that's we're gonna like call it uh, here again. If anybody wants information. Uh, with Jeff's work, uh, reach out to me on email. I'll forward the email to Jeff. Uh, best to send it to info at hedge fund telemetry, and we'll do our best to uh, send it to Jeff and get that, uh, you know, see what you can do with, with that, Jeff. Okay. And um, I will have a late note out. Uh, and again, uh, for those uh, just rates at the highs, sorry, ADD. Uh, I'm off on Friday, I'm going to California. And uh, I'm going to be a very sad dad next week because uh, my daughter, my youngest daughter, is moving there. So I am um, I'm out on Friday. Everyone, thank you, Jeff. John, hey, remember to tell people that Monday's a holiday too. I yeah, oh that's true. I'm and I'm back on Monday afternoon. Um, so yeah, that's it. Full, full advantage of the long weekend. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm moving stuff and buying cars and doing all. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what fun. So Jeff, yeah. thank you. Uh, yeah. Everyone, thank you very much for joining us. And um, until next time, take Great care. Day. Great day.